my mom is 88 years old and she's uh, got some memory loss and she's lost a lot of her sight. So she's really, oh the funniest story, mom and dad needed a new dishwasher so we all, I got them in the car, got them to Lowe's and we headed for the home appliances department. And mom, she was a little more spry back then, but her sight was really bad. She uh, marches to the front, so dad and I fall behind. We're following her. We come to the dishwashers. She keeps walking. We both stop at the dishwashers and wonder what's going on with mom. <laughs> she keeps going and going. Finally, I say, dad, wait here. And uh, I'll go get mom. So I go to get mom, and she's standing proudly right beside two dorm-sized refrigerators. I said, Mom, we're looking for the dishwashers, and Dad and I found them. They're over there. So, so she can't see, and her fingers, her coordination is going. So she has this long down coat with a zipper all the way up. So she grabs the two ends, and then she fiddles with it, and I watch her because I don't want to impede her independence, but sometimes she just can't get it. Same with the seat buckle when we get in the car. She can pull it over, but she can't line it up and click it. So, I'm helping Mom with her zipper. Get it going. Zipper all up nice. And I said, you know, we have come full circle. And I gave her a hug, and uh, she said, yes, we have. So, I want to talk just briefly to encourage you about something that uh, is real about life, and that is there is a circle of life. There's a there's a time in your life, and part of that involves at the beginning. Your you need to older humans to help you learn how to think, how to imagine things, how to follow a verbal storyline. And that's the purpose of fairy tales. And so they're very simple stories, usually with some kind of uh, a moral, but it gets the kid to imagine uh, uh, things like there was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children she didn't know what to do. So the kid, if he doesn't have a storybook in front of him, needs to imagine a shoe imagine a bunch of kids. Yeah, well, how many kids could fit in the shoe? None. So what do you need? Oh, you need a giant shoe. So the fairy tale's purpose is to help the kid puzzle on something and think it through and use his imagination. But the reason that they're called fairy tales is they're very simple stories and they give you this simple, broad view of things without a bunch of confusing details. And then once you get past the fairy tale phase, uh, the confusing details are where your independence lies. And so you don't like fairy tales anymore when you're a big kid. You want to know the truth. You want to know what really life is like. And uh, one of the things that really doesn't get explained to a lot of people in our culture is that fairy tales end with, and they live happily ever after. Well, that's kind of uh, unclear what might happen in all those years while they're living happily. So there's a cycle of life, and if you're older, you know this, because when you're a kid, all of a sudden you can drive and your, your life changes, because you're going all over town, and you're having more fun with your friends. It's a really nice independent feeling. And then a little later on, uh, you know, after school ends and people get their careers and their jobs going, all of a sudden you'll feel like, man, it's like every other weekend this summer I've had to rent a tuxedo and be in some wedding. And all my friends are getting married and it's amazing. It's a good time. And then, uh, you know, then there's the reveal party. So there's a whole, whole, uh, pattern to life, everybody's life. And so your parents are aging and your kids are growing up and all of a sudden your kids are gone, gone and you have some free time. And you're like, 
well, what am I going to put my focus on? And if you're so uh, unused to change, you might be really saddened by the fact that your kids are gone. And uh, There are other people that say, happiness is when the last kid moves out and the dog dies. <laughs> so, who knows uh, how you're going to perceive this. But it is a pattern in everyone's life that has children. Your parents will age and your and your kids will age and you will age and all of a sudden there's a major shift in the time you have between waking and sleeping that's not working. It's like, oh wow, what are we going to do this evening? Wow, we don't have any kid management. Well, then the other part of this nebulous happily ever after, the next thing that happens is your parents either die or they have some health problems. And the medical community can keep me, most people alive for a long time after nature said no. Uh, and I, I have always believed, I've never heard anybody else say it, but isn't it true? Death is 100% natural. Now, afterlife is something we can debate, but there's no confusion about the issue that uh, life in this body is supposed to end. And so we got to be four square about this and uh, rid ourselves of the confusion left by fairy tales and this idea of happily ever after. Don't, don't leave me, there's good news. I'm a positive person, but we're going to look at the foundation of, uh, of how our life pattern runs. And so some people... They're hitting their 50s. Their kids are grown. Maybe they've got some disposable income. Suddenly, they have choices about what uh, activity they could pursue unimpeded by the need to be so heavily involved in their children's lives. Uh, about this time, a couple of bad things can happen. Uh, your parents can get sick and then die. Or... Wouldn't you say it was a little bit worse than, like m both my grandmothers died of a sudden heart attack. Quietly, peacefully, without huge health problems beforehand. And then, uh, and that was it. A hundred percent natural death. And uh, So if that doesn't happen, because we can keep the physical body alive, part of the physical body is the brain, which we presumably used to think with, or think we used to think with. And so when they do autopsies on dementia patients, Alzheimer's patients, they find holes, I don't know why I'm laughing, holes in the brain, like it's just rotted wood. And so this impairs thinking for many years until it, it uh, finally leads to the patient's death. And... Uh, I don't know that we were supposed to live so long that our brain rots from the inside. Maybe we can find a cure. We're very bunch of clever people, but um, we have to look without any fairy tale shadows on this on this thought that prolonging the life of someone who is suffering, having their brain eaten, is not uh, is not the best policy. I'm not suggesting that I kill my parents or start advocating for assisted suicide or anything like that. I'm suggesting in a very gentle way. First of all, we accept that death is 100% natural. We stop trying so hard to stay alive. I mean, I've had 61 turbulent but good years, really a ton of adventure. It was rough and tumble, and uh, I did not uh, sit this one out. And so, I'm not afraid if it ends tomorrow, somebody squashes me on my bike. And I've said this before. I believe in an afterlife and a benevolent good behind the good in humanity and the beauty in nature. And the... You can feel it too, or you would have turned me off long ago. So, I think that We've learned to prolong ourselves in so many ways 
and make that a goal that is uh, in opposition to the idea that death is natural. And if we would accept that idea, then we can lay down a little bit of the burden of responsibility. I can't have another piece of cake because I must live as long as I possibly can. And because none of my loved ones have accepted the notion that death is 100% natural. I don't know. I'm, I'm not trying to sort that out. What I'm trying to explain is the pattern. And the pattern of life in fairy tales is not spelled out for you because of all the health problems at the end of life that uh, can go on for years and years. I had a friend whose father had dementia and from the time they diagnosed to the time he died was only two years. That was really quick. Everyone was so grateful because uh, it was obvious he was suffering from all the anxiety caused by the brain trauma induced however it is when you get Alzheimer's. And, uh, but the family was very grateful that he died with only two years. There are other families who have to have constant care or give it to their demented loved one for a decade or more. There's another aspect to this unexplained pattern of life and that is say your spouse dies. When I was dating I would uh, often meet women whose spouse had died in, in their early 50s and uh, that was that was a real wake-up call for me because I hadn't realized that this happily ever after has a lot more fine print in that contract that nobody ever reads and uh, but but the pattern is there and one of the other patterns I realized is, okay, well, you're dating a widower or someone divorced, and that's because we're at this point in our lives where uh, relationships have ended for whatever reason. So it's kind of fun to date a person like that if you're really into them because they got a ton of sto a lifetime worth of antidotes, and that's uh, that's so delightful. That's when you stay up talking all night. There's a pattern to relationships, too. And uh, I don't know that anyone married for 50 years would describe it as happily ever after. There's a, a lot more to it. There's got to be a lot more give and take. So, even dating at my age involves this huge risk. I'm going to let a person into my life and commit to them. And they might get Alzheimer's. What if you just, you're just you just married to somebody that you love and everything, but it's a different thing. You're not going to you're not going to settle down on an economic platform like marriage so that you can raise a family in in stability. And that's uh, one of the purposes our culture has uh, has uh, set up marriage for is to have this stable platform for the kids to grow up in and the parents to do their job of parenting. And, uh, so a relationship at my age doesn't involve any of that. Uh, if I'm dating a woman my age, she might be really into her grandkids, but that's not uh, what I'm trying to say. I keep getting off on a tangent is that um, there's even a risk in dating at my age because I might get um, in a situation uh, where I'm, I'm caregiving for another person who I don't, uh, you know, I thought we were going to have golden years together. And uh, someone with a malfunctioning brain because of the holes that it drills in your brain when you get dementia, is they're not thinking clearly. And they're not communicating clearly. And they're not managing their emotions and they're getting upset on a regular basis and confused on a regular basis. The more confusion, the more upset. You really have to be an anchor of stability and that begins within you to take on this task. And my heart goes out to you, caregiver, because this task does not have a set ending. Alright, you're going to do this for three months and it's good. 
It might be you do this for 12 years and it's good. I don't know. But the happily ever after thing is uh, quite a misnomer. So is the ridiculous idea that death is unnatural and uh, the marketers have drilled it into our brain that we must try every medication and we must keep uh, keep up on the latest developments in healthcare care and, uh, and we must guard our health and we must live as long as we possibly can because death is failure. <laughs> Who knows? But I know that I don't ascribe to that idea. I say that live as long as life is good. If you got holes in your brain, that's quite an impediment to having uh, enjoyment. Unless you're following the the ideas that I put forth in uh, in my first couple videos uh, on this channel, the Peaceful Caregiver, and that is that you have this wonderful opportunity because their brain is malfunctioning and they're confused and scared. You get to intervene and lead them to the happy place that you have picked out to make them happy. And you can keep them in a state of perpetual happiness by just redirecting their focus to something happy because they're looking to you as the caregiver, as the one who helps them get through life and navigate what do we do next and what's going on today. And all these things give you a huge opportunity to say, it's a good day, it's a wonderful day. We're drinking coffee right now, but after we get done with that, I think we got a high-definition giant TV in the other room with 500 channels, and there's a documentary on World War II in there, and we're going to watch it today, and it's going to be awesome. So, uh, it's so easy to, to lead that confused mind, because even though it's malfunctioning, you can, they're looking for some guidance. And the guidance can be given when you learn those techniques. So I'm glad you're checking out my channel. Check out those videos. Let's see. I'll put a playlist, little banner thing right there. Anyway. So there's a circle of life. It does not involve <laughs> happily ever after uh, most of the time. And when you get towards the end of life, you may be taking care of a spouse who is not... not a shadow of the person that you uh, began the relationship with because of dementia. And uh, same with parents. It could be so uh, upsetting and heartbreaking to see them becoming feeble and confused. It's almost like they get, they're get they toddlers and they get younger every day. And, uh, and it, there's no... Uh, there's no happy ending to this type of happily ever after. So, next time you see some commercial where they're trying to get you to make sure that you do everything you can to prolong your life, just remember this true fact. Your golden years will not be between the ages of 75 and 95 years old. So, <laughs> I'm thinking of the Years ago, before pumpkin spice, before gluten-free, there was a giant marketing campaign uh, to eat oat bran. And they had these oat bran cereals that tasted like sawdust ground up and pasted together with straw and then put through an oven to make them crispy. It was just, but it was, it was healthy, according to the marketer, so... Um, so people were really into this old brand to prevent cancer. I think that's what it was. So an elderly couple got in a car accident and were killed and they went to heaven. They're walking around heaven arm in arm. And they're just thinking how beautiful it is. Well, the wife is. She says, honey, isn't this beautiful? And he says, yeah, we could have been here ten years ago. If you hadn't made us eat all that old bread. <laughs> so, so I'm just uh, trying to encourage you to think through these issues and get it, get it straight in your head because what our culture accepts as true is not true. The happily ever after could easily involve you 
caregiving for a demented loved one. And uh, what's the good news? Oh, there's great news. Humans love to do this. We love to give care. How, how, why do we have so many pets? Why? We let animals into our house. Why is that? Because we love to care for them and we love to see them uh, thrive. And we love to see what they're going to do next. And uh, caring for my parents uh, can be very frustrating, but it, it also can be so richly rewarding. And I just take a moment while they're moving real slow to appreciate uh, that I love them. And uh, to appreciate that the beautiful aspect to this part of the cycle of life, which is they cared for me and I was not easy to care for. And so I'm caring for them and that is very satisfying. Frustrating, yes, sometimes, but satisfying. They are two sweet people and it's so beautiful to see them that they have each other. What a rare and beautiful thing at their age. And so the good news, I would say, is that without some kind of rea real view of life, the death is 100% natural. And it's messy. <laughs> um, and if, if you have that, then you can also have an idea that um, there is good behind this lifetime. There is more. You look at the complexity and beauty of nature and how that cycles and cycles with, with winter and then spring. Um, and so why wouldn't it be with humans? I'm not trying to get into the details of any denomination of any faith. It's just that I know there's more. Uh, there's more after this. And so with that thought in mind, I can enjoy this. I know that if there's terrible judgment, uh, that will be mitigated by my genuine love for my fellow human beings and for life and for nature, and I don't worry about that. And so I can say, all right, if I, got, if I die tomorrow, that's all right with me. I had a great run. And something better is there. I'm not f afraid that my existence is ending. It's not just, just be another form. And without this body, which is a limitation, I mean, you got to maintain it, you got to feed it, you got to run to the bathroom, you got all these things. And as you get older, the happily ever after uh, does not cover the fact that you will probably have some ailments, and some of those can be pretty chronic as you get older. Um, so. The attitude of there's more, once once this one is done and ends 100% naturally, I'm not going to sweat it because I know that the beauty that exists in this world is uh, the underlying structure for my existence. And I love that thought. So I, that consoles me, that makes me happy in these circumstances some could consider dark and Sometimes I do too, but uh, but that's the thing. If you grow older and you keep growing and you keep trying to figure things out and you keep asking and and assuming that there is a good answer, then you keep learning and learning and learning. And the more you learn with a good attitude, the more you see your world is built by you and your attitude, your consistent attitude. So it can be a beautiful place. And so the circumstances don't matter as much as you might think they would. And if you're looking for good things and you're stuck in a situation where you're caregiving for a loved one, you can immediately turn them into your uh, focus of appreciation, like I have done with my parents, the sweet old people that I take care of. And so find what's what you like about your patient and amplify that think of them in a peaceful way in a happy way know that the 100% natural cure for their illness will come someday someday soon maybe and you're you're a loving caregiver if you hope that day is soon 
because do you want them to live until all their brain is gone? That's how it ends. If it's if it's strung out long enough, the patient either dies from the brain not being able to uh, move their diaphragm and they suffocate, or they choke on their own saliva because it can't, their brain can't make them swallow anymore. And so it's a gruesome end if it's prolonged all that time. But you can hope for the best. You can hope that your patient dies a painless death before the pain is multiplied, the confusion and the anguish. And uh, you can mitigate that too. So the situation is not that bad if you look at it in the right way with uh, the chance to love and serve and all the satisfaction that that can bring us humans because at heart we are good. And you are good. Take this moment as a peaceful moment to take just a few seconds. Let your mind clear of all the, the rough bi vibration that can be brought on by caregiving. And let it go. Because that's that stable place we're going to now is, is the secret of being compassionate patient and loving and that's what you want so let's get to that stable place by just slowing our minds just for a moment I want to say how valuable this is that we can talk in this way about things that could be upsetting but they don't need to be we approach it from the right mindset as we're doing now. I want to thank you for watching. And, uh, my heart is filled with the fact that you're watching it. And this is good. We're connecting. It's helpful to both of us. <laughs> Enjoy your day.